Hello everybody and thank you for attending to this Deja Vu X free training for beginners. Today we will cover the main aspects of the software. I will teach you how to start using it properly. Thank you really to all of you for attending to this presentation. We are really really proud and happy to present you the new software. So let's start right away with the content of this training session. So first we will talk about the workflow how to use Deja Vu. Then we will create a project from the very beginning to the end. Then we will have a look together at the user interface. Then we will run the analysis for the project we have just created. I will go into the details so that you can really see what's going on with it and that you can use it at your advantage. Then we will talk about the pre-translation. I will show you the basic pre-translation and then we will try to go further using the DeepMiner module. Then I will show you the segment statuses and we will filter on them according to the status. It can be very handy in various cases. Then we will talk about the translation tips and tricks. How to use the software, what are the main shortcuts, what you can do when you start with it. Then we will talk about the QA checks, the quality assurance. I will show you how to use it and what you can do with it. Once we have done that, we will export the translated document before delivery. At the end of the presentation, we will update the databases just to make sure that all the good translations will be usable next time you want to create a project. At the end of the session, we will have a Q&A session, so feel free to prepare all the questions you might have, we will try to answer all of them. Ok? Let's get things going. First, the workflow. So this is the process with Deja Vu X3. First, you have the files you want to translate. So, a lot of files can be imported directly in Deja Vu X2. If you want to know what kind of files you can translate using Deja Vu X3, they are not listed here, there are many more, you can go on our website and there is a page where you can see all the formats that you can translate in Deja Vu X3. So, when you have a translation request, what you want to do is to create a project. A project is an empty box in which you will import the files you want to translate. Then, you will specify the source language. What is the source language for this project? Then the target language, or the target languages, if you are working on the multilingual project. Then you will attach the translation memories to the project. You can create one when you create a project, or you can create your own before creating a project. Then you can do the same thing with the term bases. You can create your own term base while you are translating, when you are aligning documents, or using an Excel glossary, for example, that you would have stored on your computer. Then you can import the document and play around with the options, depending on what is the result you are expecting. Then you specify the client for this project and the subject. Then it's time to run the pre-translation. If you want if you are working with other translators, with colleagues, you can export what we call the translator file. The great news is that if you work with people that are using Deja Vu X3, or Deja Vu X2 for that matter, you can send them what we call a satellite file. On another hand, if they are using another CAD tool, such as Trados or any other CAD tool, you can send them a file that will be imported successfully in their CAD tool. Once it is done, you can perform a QA check of this satellite files or the external view and import, in, and import everything back into the project. So again, I repeat, it doesn't matter if your colleagues are using Deja Vu or another CAD tool, you can do that anyway. Then you import everything in the project and you can run the quality assurance check. So basically you will check terminology, numbers, spell check, the duplicates, and a lot of other things. Then it's time to update the translation memories. 
and to export the translated file. So let's start by creating a project together. This is a DejaVuX3 interface when you open the software for the first time. OK, you simply click on New, Project, and you want to create a new translation project. So the first thing I have to do is to store it somewhere and to give it a name, give it a name to this new project. So I will use this folder and I will put my project here. OK, I click on Save and my project is saved. Now I click on Next. So I have to specify the source language for my project. I will choose English UK as the source language. As a target language, I will choose French, German and Russian. Now I click on Next. Here I can add an, a translation memory. So I click on Add Local Translation Memory. I look for my existing translation memory, this one. And I can also create a new one from this interface. Let's click on Add Local Translation Memory. Let's give it a name, new tm. I click on open and I get a warning that the file doesn't exist. So Deja Vu basically asks me if I want to create a new translation memory. I click on yes. The read mode, you see here, the read mode, what is that? Well, it simply means that you will be able to read the content from the translation memory. You will be able to use it in the project. The write mode means that you will be able to update the translation memory in this project. If there is a translation memory that you want to use for reference only, you can uncheck the write mode. This way you will be able to use the content of this translation memory, but you won't update it. The reverse mode means that you can use the segments that you have translated yesterday, for example, from English to French. You can use it today from French to English. Just an example. Here we have the penalty percentage. Let's say that you have a translation memory and you know that there are mistakes in it. In this case, you can simply set a penalty percentage. This way, if you get an exact match from this translation memory, it will be displayed as a fuzzy match, so you will proofread it. Once you have done that, you can click on Next. Let's do the same thing with the term base. I will add an existing term base and I can create one as well. Now I can click on Next. Here I can use the machine translation provider if I want to. If I don't want to, I will simply click on Next. Just so you know, DejaVuX3 is compatible with those machine translation providers. Google Translate, Sistra Enterprise Server, Microsoft Translator, and many others. Feel free to get in touch with us if you need more information. Now I click on Next. Here it's time to specify the client and the subject attributes. So, here there is one client in my DejaVuX3 copy. I can add a new client very easily by clicking on Add, Remove here. For example, I can add this new client I would simply click on Add. Now it is available in my list. Per default there is a huge list of subjects that are available. Feel free to use it or feel free to remove it by clicking there on Delete All and create your own subject list. Now let's click on Next. Now it's time to import the source files in my translation project. To do that, I click on Add. My source files are to be found here. And I will import those two files in my translation project. If I want, I can play around with the properties before importing the document. Here, I will use the new 
filter, which is the Microsoft Office Live filter. This one is enabled per default on all other copy. And you can play around with the options should you need to do so, but we will talk about it later on. Now I'm ready to click on Next. My project has been created. I can click on Close. Now let's have a look at the user interface. This is the Deja Vu Free interface when you open a project, a translation project. Let's start with the translation grid. This is the source column. It contains all the segments that you have to translate. You will translate the segments here in the target column. You can switch from one language to the other by clicking there. You can customize the interface. As you can see here, the preview of the document is available. You can hide it if you want by clicking on Auto Hide. And then you can benefit from it if you put your mouse on it. Here we have the auto search window that contains all the matches from the translation memory, the term base, and all the databases linked to the project. In red, you can see the matches from the translation memory. Here, for example, in blue, we have a match from the term base. Here, this is the project explorer. So it contains the list of the files that are imported in the project. You also have the word count available at any time and the percentage of completion of your project. New in Deja Vix 3 are the ribbons. All the comments are grouped per teams into the appropriate ribbon, so it's a lot easier to find what you want to do and to use the various comments. If you don't like it, or if you want to hide it, you can do that by clicking there on Minimize the ribbon. Then feel free to customize your Quick Access Toolbar. As you can see, I've customized my own. I can use the pre-translate feature very easily by clicking there, or the analysis module by clicking there. To customize the toolbar, you click there, more commands, quick access toolbar, and you select, you simply select the commands you want to add in the quick access toolbar. Should you need to change the language of the interface, you go on File, Options, User Interface Language, and you can choose your own. Chinese is on, is on its way, so is Dutch. So pretty soon, Dutch and Chinese will be available as a User Interface Language. Now let's have a look at the Analysis Module. The Analysis Module is available here in the Project tab of the ribbon. You can click on Analyze. You can analyze all the languages or only the current languages. Same thing with the files. You can analyze all the files or the current file you are working in. You can specify which translation memory you want to use or use all the translation memories attached to the project. Then you have the choice between two word count. You can count words like Microsoft Word or like Deja Vu. Usually, Microsoft Word count will count more words than Deja Vu. For example, the Deja Vu word count won't count the numbers. Keep that in mind when you run the analysis. So let's click on Analyze. This is the result I am getting. I have a recap here of my project, and now I can have a look at my analysis grid. So the first thing, the total number of words. It's available here, okay? Here you have the number of segments. The segment is the unit which is selected during the analysis module. You can see that five segments have no match in the translation memory for a total number of 49 words. Then you have the various types of fuzzy matches. 50 to 74 percent, 75 to 84 percent, 95 to 94 percent, 95 to 99 percent. The exact matches, they just have 100 percent matches. And the guaranteed matches, they are the same thing than exact matches plus contextual information. By that, I mean that they are exact matches, but when you send those in the translation memory, 
the same segment was to be found before and after it. This way you know that the context is the same and that there are very little chance that you have to proofread them, so that's why we call them guaranteed matches. Duplicates. What are the duplicates? The duplicate is a segment whose content is to be found more than once in the project. Since you are using DataVix free, you will only have to translate them once. The other duplicates will be automatically managed by the software. Here you can see the internal repetition rate. What is that? It is the rate, the frequency, at which the same words are repeated in the project. Long story short, if the internal repetition is above 20%, you can consider very interesting to create a term base and to extract terminology before starting the translation process. Feel free to use this grid to create your estimate or your quotation to the client. You can save this by clicking there on save and you can save it in HTML format, text file, or Excel document. You can also copy that and paste it in an email. There are other types of analysis that are available. If you are interested, I recommend you that you have a look at the training session for advanced users. We will talk about it in more detail. Now, let's pre-translate the translation project. We will first run a basic pre-translation and then we will have a look at the more advanced option. So let's close the analysis. I would make the ribbon visible anytime. Under the project ribbon you can see this pre-translate feature. Let's click on it. Again, you can choose to pre-translate the current language or all the target languages. Same thing with the files, you can translate one file or all the files simultaneously. If you had already pre-translated the document or the project, you can choose to overwrite certain matches according to the status. Now let's have a look at the matching submenu. You can choose to accept only exact matches from the translation memory. Let's do that. I click on OK. Here I have the results. 21 source segments have been processed. 8 segments have a unique exact match. Here they are. You can see them very easily. You see, the status is different. You can see the color, which is dark green. It means that they are exact matches. If I put my mouse here, I'm getting the explanation. This is an exact match. The score is 100%. Now, let's go further. Let's uncheck this option so that DejaVuX3 will also insert the fuzzy matches. You can see here the fuzzy matches. They are in light green as opposed to the dark green of the exact matches. Again, if I put my mouse on it, I'm getting the results. So I can start translating right away. Or I can try to go further with the pre-translation module. Let's right-click on the translation grid and let's clear the fuzzy matches. Let's run a new pre-translation. You can see that if you want, you can check the repair fuzzy matches option. If you don't know what that means, well, you see that there are contextual information available for you. The point is, DejaVux3 can try to repair the fuzzy matching using all the content that is available in the databases attached to the project. May that be term base, translation memory, or lexicon. So let's try that. Let's have a look. Repair fuzzy matches. How do I want to do that? I can use the deep minor statistical extraction or the machine translation. For the time being, I will only use the deep minor statistical extraction, which concerns only your databases. Let's click on OK, let's have a look at what happens. If we have a look at this segment, you can see that this is a fuzzy match, it is in light green, and you can see this icon here, the tools. It means that this segment has been repaired thanks to the deep minor statistical extraction. 
What happened? Let's have a look here in the auto search window. Déjà vu highlights the difference between what is to be translated today and what is to be found in the translation memory. We have translated in the past this sentence. It's never been so simple, as you can see in the translation memory, it's never been so simple to manage licenses both for your users and for you. But here we have to translate it's never been so easy. That's a not big difference, it's just for you to understand the concept behind the DeepMiner. What happened is that DejaVix3 look for all the occurrences of easy in the translation memory. It found out that it was to be translated by Facile, most likely. And so it, it fixed the fuzzy match and corrected it thanks to the DeepMiner. And you can have a look at it right away thanks to the status. You can see the tool, you know that it has been fixed by the DeepMiner. So you can have a look at it and check if everything is okay. Here a different thing happened. It has been fixed as well, it has been repaired by the software, but this time as you can see in the contextual information, it has been repaired with the term base. You see previously we had translated assigned déjà vu licenses to users once and the system takes care of the rest. You can see system is in red, whereas software is in blue. Why? Because today we have to translate the same sentence but system would have been replaced by software. And if you look there in the term base, software is translated by logiciel. So basically what DejaVix3 did is that it replaced the translation of system and replaced it with the good translation that is to be found in your term base. So that's why I encourage you to create your term base because it can really help you when you are pre-translating and when you use the DeepMiner. So let's recap the things here. You can run a classic pre-translation. In this case, no repair of fuzzy matches. Exact matches and fuzzy matches will be inserted in the translation grid. You can choose to accept only exact matches, or you can try to use the deep miner and see what happens. Usually, good things happen. You can get better results thanks to this. It will try to repair the fuzzy matches and that can really help you, as you can see here. Now let's talk about the segment statuses and the filtering options. As mentioned earlier, you can see that there are various segment statuses available in DejaVux3. This is an exact match, this is a fuzzy match that has been repaired, this is a fuzzy match, and there are plenty of other segment status depending on the situation. The thing is that you can filter on them very easily by using the filter selector. Let's have a look at this. We have pre-translated the document and now we want to fix the fuzzy match. You can filter on them very easily and simply correct what should be corrected. You can also filter on the repaired fuzzy match segment only and make sure that everything is alright. A lot of segment statuses are available. You can see that those three are new. There is the translated status, proofread status, and approved status. How can you take care of that? Let's go back to all the segments. I'm having a look at this segment right now. The translation is good. I will confirm it. To confirm a segment, I will press Ctrl plus down a row. As you can see, it has been confirmed. Now the segment is marked as translated. Why is it marked as translated? Because if I have a look here, it is written confirm as translated. This is the confirmation mode. You can change that depending on what you are doing. When you are translating, feel free to keep this mode on. When you are proofreading, feel free to change it. Now every time I will confirm a segment, it will be marked as proofread. For example, this one, okay, it's a good translation, let's confirm it. If I put my mouse here, you, you can see that it is not exactly the same status, it is proofread. The great thing is that, depending on how you work, you can first translate the segment, then start proofreading and you can very easily make the difference between the different status thanks to the filter selector. Then you can take the time to 
proofread the translated segment and if you want you can even validate the proofread segment should you need to do so. Of course there are a lot of other filters as you can see and you can even create your own using SQL statement but that's another story. If you want to play around with the status feel free to right click on a segment to go on segment status and you can see some of them here the most common one. For example if you have a doubt on the translation you can set the segment as pending and at the end of the day feel free to filter on the pending segments to edit them should you need to do so. So what is great about that is that it really gives you a lot of flexibility in your workflow. For example you can also filter on the empty segments and make sure that you translate everything. So you will get used to it by practicing. Take time to have a look at them and to use them consistently and again depending on the workflow. But thanks to this there is nothing that you cannot do. You can really adapt the workflow that you want to have with the tool. There is a shortcut for each segment status. You can have a look at all the status directly online. Here you have the list of all the shortcuts available. Feel free to have a look at them and to create your own list. I will unfilter the selection and get back to all segments. Now let me show you a few translation tips and tricks. First, we will learn how to import a new file in my translation project. To do so, I go on the Project Explorer, I do right click, I go on Add, Add File. Let's import this document. You can see that it is not imported yet. You can select it before importing it and play around with the properties. Once you are done, you right click on it and you click on import. Let's open the file. So we will translate this one and see what happens. First thing, here you can see the translator options. They are listed there. Here is the auto write. What is the auto write? It is exactly what you are seeing right now. Deja Vu is scanning the database in real time and offers you suggestions that you won't have to type. I can press enter and this one is inserted. You can see I can insert a non-breaking space by pressing Ctrl Shift plus space here. I am seeing it because under the home tab the hidden paragraph marks are displayed. Okay, I can choose to hide them or to display them. Now let's type the rest of my translation. Again, it is suggested by the auto write. Now let's confirm the segment. This one has been assembled. Why? Because here the auto translate feature is enabled. Here nothing was to be found in the translation memory except portions. In this case, Deja Vu X3 inserted them and you just have to type the rest. Here you can see I have two words in bold. I can make them bold very easily by selecting them and pressing Ctrl plus B. I can also click on the formatting directly from the ribbon. Now let's confirm the segment. Here what happens? The same thing. The auto translate here is enabled and if I have a look at the auto search window I can see that I have a match in my translation memory so it gets automatically inserted in the translation grid. This one is blue and highlighted. It means that there are several possibilities. If I right click on it, I will have the choice between the two possibilities. Since I want it to be in italic, I will select it and press Ctrl plus I. Now let's confirm this segment. Same thing match was to be found in my translation memory so it has been automatically inserted. Again, this one is triggered when I confirm a segment, so I, when I press Ctrl plus down a row, and the auto-translate feature is enabled. You remember about the deep minor? 
The DeepMiner can also be triggered directly when you are translating and confirming a segment. Let's have a look at other feature. Let's open this file, which is called the duplicate. Let's translate this segment. Again, I'm using the auto write feature. Now let's confirm it. What happened? Again, the auto translate feature is on. So when I send this segment in the translation memory, I did that by confirming the segment. This one got automatically translated. Okay, I'm getting a fuzzy match. Let's edit the fuzzy match. Now this is the good translation. I will confirm it. But before confirming it, as you can see here, this segment has been automatically inserted by the software. Why? Because this is a duplicate. Okay, it's the same segment. This one and this one, they have the same content. So when I confirm this one, and since the auto propagate here is enabled, this one has been inserted automatically. You can see that this is a different status. If I put my mouse here, I can see that this is an exact propagated segment. Okay, this was triggered, I repeat, because the auto propagate feature is enabled. Let's go back to this one. I have edited it. I'm ready to confirm it. Let's do that. When I did that, the segment was sent to the translation memory, and this one was propagated as well. Why? Because there is a number here, I have fixed it, and it has been automatically propagated there. This is a new status. If I have a look at it, I'm getting a fuzzy propagated and renumbered segment. OK, so I repeat. There are a lot of translation features are available here. The auto write, the auto translate, the auto search that you are you are all familiar with right now is this feature here, the auto search, the auto propagate. You have seen it here and here. The auto send, which means that every time you will confirm a segment by pressing Ctrl down a row the segment will be sent in the translation memory. And then the auto-check. What is the auto-check? Let's have an example. I will voluntarily change the number. Now if I want to confirm this segment, I'm getting a warning. You can see the red exclamation mark. If I put my mouse here, Deja Vu warns me the number that is to be found in the source was not to be found in the target. So I know that there is a mistake, I can fix it. Let's go back on another file. As you can see, there is a term here in my term base. If I replace this one, which is the way software should be translated in French, according to my term base here, I can replace it with a synonym. Now when I try to confirm my segment, I'm getting a warning as well. You see, Deja Vu warns me, a consistent terminology, software should be translated as a logiciel. So it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to use this feature, leave it enabled here. If you don't want to use the auto-check, simply disable this feature. Let's continue with a few tips and tricks. Let's say you want to add a term in the term base. For example, translations, you want it to be translated by traduction. You simply select the term in the source and in the target, and you press F11, or you click on Add to Term Base. This is the dialog box you get. Feel free to fill that. And then when you're done, you click on Add. As you can see now, it is to be found in the term base. So it's really no more complicated than that. Other feature. Should you need to check how you have translated a certain word in your project, you can filter on it. Let's have a look on benefits, for example. I can right click, go on filter, filter by source selection. This way, you see, 
Deja Vu X3 will filter on the segment that contains the word. I can make sure that it has been translated consistently. When I'm done, I right click, I go back on filter, and I remove the filter. Now, let's say I want to check how a certain word or a certain bunch of words have been translated in my translation memory. So I can select this word, for example, right click on it, and click on scan translation memory, or use the appropriate shortcut, which is Control plus S. Let's do that. Here you can see all the occurrences in which easy is to be found in my translation memory. This way you make sure that you are consistent when you are translating. Those are just a few tips. There are many other things that you can do with the software. Again, this is just to get you going with it. If you want to know how to perform further things using the software, feel free to attend the other webinars that are playing. Now let's talk about the QA checks. The quality assurance module is available under Review. By default, the quality assurance module will check for a consistent terminology, for the numbers, for the missing tags, and for other things that you can define and create on your own. For example, if I click on Batch QA, you can see that I have my own QA checks here. I have created them myself by using the SQL statement. If you are interested, please attend the other webinars and we will see how to deal with that, how to create them. For example, I can check the punctuation or the non-translatable symbols and all kind of other things. Anyway, I will just run a basic QA check right now. Ok, now it's done. I will open my project, so all the files in one go. And now I can filter on the segment that contains a consistent terminology. If we have a look here, we have the same warning that we had earlier. Software, which is to be found in the term base, is not correctly translated according to the term base. So, you can change that, or you can ignore it, depending on what you want to do. If you want to fix it, you can insert it right away by pressing Ctrl plus 2. You can insert an entry from the auto-search window very easily thanks to the number in front of it. Here, the entry from the term base has the number 2, so if I press Ctrl plus 2, it is inserted right away. Now let's have a look at the other segment. 2013 is to be found in the source, but I have translated it with 2012. This is a mistake. I can fix it right away as well. Here we have a mistake with the number, so same thing, I can fix it. Now let's have a look at other kind of QA warnings. Here, two embedded tags are missing. Those tags would ensure you that when you export the document, this word would be in red. So to insert it, I will put my mouse here and click on F8. Then I can insert the second one by clicking on F8 as well. Now I'm done with the QA check. I repeat, there are a lot of other things that you can do with the QA check, but if you are interested, please attend to the next webinar. Now let's export the translated documents. To export the documents, it's really easy. You can export them one by one by right-clicking on them and clicking on Export, or you can export all of them by clicking on the project here and choosing Export All. Run remark. You won't be able to export a document if there are empty segments in it. Still, if you want to export half of your translation to proofread it, you can do that by using this command. It is under Project, and it's called pseudo-translate. When you click on pseudo-translate, you will be able to generate random strings in all the empty segments. So let's do that. All the segments that were empty have now been filled with random characters. So now I'm ready to export all the project. I can export all the three languages in one go, or simply export the French. I will specify the folder where I want to store it. I will put that in the pseudo translation folder, and click on OK. 
Here, in this folder, everything is available. If I open this file, I will be able to see my translated content, and what I have not translated yet will be identified really easily thanks to the pseudo-translation. How to update the database? Let's pretend that my translation is over. Let's pretend that those translations are correct. Now I want to send everything in the translation memory in one go, OK? And replace the previous versions of each segment with the proofread versions. To do so, I click there on Add to Translation Memory. I click on OK. And I'm done. Everything has been sent in the translation memory. I'm ready for the next project. Well, that would be it for today. Again, thank you for attending to this presentation, and should you have any question for the next 20 minutes, please go ahead. We are here for you to answer any question you might have, so please feel free to ask any question you have. Thank you very much and talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.